Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sign One Studios live virtual chat. I'm Sign One News anchor Martha Anger. Thank you for joining us. All right. Hey, listen, our loyal Sign One viewers, you know what to do. Let us know where you're watching us from so we can give your city, state, or country a virtual shout out. So go ahead and start typing now. Hello, so we can give you a shout out. I am so excited about our topic today and my special guest. Disney Plus released the much anticipated Marvel superhero series entitled Echo this week. Have you seen it yet? If you haven't, not yet, okay. Just check out the trailer and you'll see what all the excitement is about. I see everything that you are. I always have. Yay! It's mesmerizing. I really encourage you to watch it all. It is amazing. You will not be disappointed. It is the best. So now a question for you. If you are a Marvel fan, you know the character Maya Lopez or Echo was first introduced during the Disney Plus Hawkeye series. She is Marvel's second deaf superhero. For you MCU trivia buffs, the first deaf superhero was who? Can you guess the name? It was Makari. And that character was introduced in the movie Eternals. So I had the pleasure and the honor of working on the crew for both productions. But I have to share this story about the Echo production. I'm never going to forget this. The first time... And the first day I met some of the crew and their ASL team, I was it was jaw dropping because everybody was signing. I was shocked and blown away. I never thought I would meet so many people who were signing. And so I was just kind of curious, where did you learn that? 
and they told me that Alakwa, who plays Maya and Echo, you know, she's a star of the show, and she asked Marvel, you know, Marvel asked her what did she want, and Alakwa said she wanted everyone, the cast, the crew, to be able to sign in ASL for language accessibility, and they did it. Oh, I was like, I love Alakwa for that. And the rest is history. To set up that signing community, that doesn't happen very often. I've been working in the film industry for a very, very long time. And it was always my dream that everybody would be signing. And it was just a wonderful experience. Everybody was so friendly and nice, and it was very a cooperative, cohesive community. I wish that would happen often. Sorry, excuse me. So I worked on Echo for four months. Best experience of my life, the accessibility, um, being able to fellowship with everyone, it was just amazing. That doesn't happen often. Again, I just hope it sets a precedent for other productions. Anyway, that aside, language accessibility. As I said, it was a top priority for Marvel executives. And my guest today, was instrumental in making sure there was accessibility on the set. His name is Douglas Ridloff. He's a poet, a performer, a visual storyteller, and he was a consulting producer and ASL master for the Echo production. Douglas, welcome. Hi. Hi, good to see you, you again. It's good to see you again. It's always good to see you. Yes. So I just have a couple of questions to ask you. Um, how did you get involved, first of all, with the Echo production? Well, it started with the Eternals. We have done three Marvel projects up until that point. We did the Eternals, of course, and we did uh, Makari, Hawkeye, and then, of course, Echo. And so I'm already in the Marvel's franchise system. So they came back around and asked me to work on the project. That's why it's important. It's who you know. That's the networking. Right. It's so key. So my next question, honestly, Tell me what it was like on the set. Did you have any challenges or some great moments? Yes. Well, of course, we've done six months and we had a lot of production and uh, we've had several barriers that came our way. Some things, you know, they didn't know, so we had to educate them. And some things they struggled with so some things were good and some things were bad. So from the beginning, they didn't really know anything. And so they were pulling hearing actresses who weren't really good with signing. They were reluctant. Some had a hard time signing. Some struggled memorizing signs. Some had modality issues. It was awkward with their signing. And so... Sometimes they would go get stuck. And so if we delaying and delaying and delaying, it costs a lot of money. And so we tried to you know, preach to them that it, if we started right the first time, they will save money. We said, so we wanted to start. I was there from the very beginning. And so, of course, you know, we questioned to see who had skill and who did not. And so we wanted one actor, but... They didn't really have the skill. They had a hard time. One other actor was better. So we chose them. And it was important uh, for the process that they understood 
and know how to apply it to other projects. And let me add framing as well, because sometimes the hearing eye doesn't understand the framing for sign language, the facial expressions, the body language. Uh, I'm an ASL director myself, so I would use a different framing, of course, because focusing on the deaf everyday life and cool. from our perspective. I'm sure you had some barriers, but the end result was beautiful. And I think it's kind of yes. natural, too, because I'm from a hearing family and all my family signs, but they don't all sign the same. Uh, some of them are struggling. Some of them are really, really good at it. And so I thought it was perfect that Echo was kind of diverse as well. And, you know, 20 years, you know, you don't see that. I was thinking, wow, it's so beautiful. In 20 years, I was pretty impressed. So it was really successful. Yes. And so here's my third question. I, I, you know, I mentioned earlier that language accessibility was so important for Marvel executives. Now, here's what the lead actress, Alakwa Cox, who plays the character of Echo, had to say about that. Take a look. With different ways of communicating at play during production, how did cast and crew ensure a smooth and effective process? The cast and crew made sure that the process was effective and smooth by taking ASL classes each week before filming even started. That was a lot of help that they even learned the basics of my language and they were taking classes with a deaf teacher. I'm pretty sure the teacher was deaf, yeah. And so it was very nice for Marvel to be able to provide that deaf teacher to these hearing people because they, you don't want a hearing person teaching, you know, the representation of ASL. We want a representative of that nation or of that culture to teach it. So it's appropriate to be able to have a deaf person teach hearing people. We also had deaf people that were working in front of and behind the camera as well. Now, that's why it always starts in the beginning. I thanked Alakwa so much for making sure that ASL was required. It was so beautiful. Yes. And so my fourth point is that you were a big part of ensuring there was language accessibility on the set. What exactly did you do? Well, so we started from the beginning. We had meetings with the executive producers, the directors, the ADs, all of those who are involved in the background filming and production. We had discussions uh, about my experience, and I want to, to start off with the right step forward. We want to start with the leading role to star Alakwa. So it was essential for us to build a relationship and also that we could possibly, for those who are really eager to learn, to show continuity throughout the six month process. And so they'll start taking up sign language classes. And after six months, there would be no more classes because we'd be too busy filming day and night. Um, and we still want to maintain um, language with me, with you, with production, with other actors. We want to make sure that the sighting mobility would continue. And that's really nice to have. So that's how we continue your know, signing. So if no deaf person was there, we don't want it to be lost. So it's very essential for a few deaf individuals to be there on set. So we continue. Oh, that's so true. I can definitely confirm that. After Echo finished, I went to Captain America and I was the only deaf person there. There were no other deaf people on set, but they were all the same people who they had used over and over again. Yes. And so I was like, oh, and it was really, really nice. We did make an impact with Marvel and I'm really proud of that. So now we have a few questions and a Q&A. 
we have some young aspiring filmmakers, directors, and actors joining us from New York School for the Deaf Fanwood. And they have a couple of questions they'd like to ask. So hello, NYSD, are you there? Hi. Hey. Hi. Hi, everyone. Can you see us OK? OK. Who wants to ask the first question? You? OK, come on up. Come on right to the front, please. I know Douglas knows me. I believe he worked with my parents. Oh, you grown up and mature. You changed so much. Well, you're older now. So I have some questions about filming and framing. And if, uh, for example, if you were framing and someone said cut because uh, someone made an error, could they do it again and again? Is that possible? Yes. If someone made an error in signing or on their lines or something within the cycle, of course, we can always have a retake and do it again just to make sure that we get an excellent product and to make sure that the frame is accurate and then we can move on to the next thing. And the reason why is continuity. That is so important. Let's say you're signing, you make a mistake and it's hard for the editor to, and you keep doing it over and over again. And that's the reason that they do that. I just wanted to add that. It's good to see you. Bye-bye. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, come on up. So I do have a question. I'm in a film and an editing class. And let's say you want to get into the Marvel film universe as an editor or a filmmaker. You know, where do I start? Do I have to go to college or film school or what? How do I do that? Uh, well, that's a good question. Uh, I think they would have to make a position. They would bring some in, in a deaf uh, director who would be assistant uh, supporting a hearing director who doesn't know sign language. So it would maintain continuity so that the language would, would match. And you would bring that person in again. And, and uh, remember, we don't want to waste money because time is money and it's a priority that we get it done quickly. And so for that role, we want to build, you want to build experience for that role. I would say go to college, study filmmaking, and then you know, make a few projects or get involved in some various projects that will help build your resume. Get a few deaf people together, interview them and see which one would be a great fit for the project. And make sure you have the correct editing equipment that is specific to that project. And so once you gain experience then someone will hire you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Beautiful. Any more questions? Yeah, come on up. I have a question for you in five or 10 years. Would you say that again? I'm sorry, would you mind? Can you do that again? Can you come a little bit closer? Okay, so in five or 10 years, Okay, I'm gonna move closer. So in five or 10 years, do you see yourself or maybe becoming more deaf centric? Myself or yourself? What do you mean? Yourself? No, no what she means is in the future, maybe five or 10 years from now, do you think Marvel might be become more deaf centric? You know, accessibility. Well, as far as Marvel's is concerned, it depends on who they bring in. You have a deaf actor, each uh, TV show will have its own group or position for a deaf team. They will have an interpreting team. Also, they'll use those same interpreters. They have uh, deaf producers, and so they'll hire more uh, directors. But, you know, I really can't predict what was going to happen tomorrow. But it'll be more of a referral of individuals based on the individual pro projects. Paramount, for example, will use the same individuals 
uh, in their group. Also, Warner Brothers, uh, they will use uh, the same individuals for their projects and ongoing. And they'll continue to use us for new projects. As for me, I'm already involved in the Marvel's system. And so I work as a consultant for them. And so what I'm trying to do is establish a consulting agency, an interpreting agency. We can call on them for referrals. And we want to set up a deaf consulting agency that we can go along with hearing interpreters and so they can work along together. And uh, yeah, if I may add, uh, to answer your question uh, about the future, the more we educate and expose people on the set and people learn, uh, the word will just spread. The referrals will go out. And it's all about who you know. That's so important, is who you know. And that's going to make it happen. You know, that's my vision. We already have DASLs, which are, what is that again? Uh, directors of ASL. Oh, director of ASL. And now Marvel for the first time, you know, a little bit different position, an ASL producer. They have definitely more influence and more power and they can consult appropriately. Now, while a DASL has some limitations in their job, the ASL producer, uh, that's huge and successful for Echo. And hopefully moving forward, I feel, you know, that we will be adding more new positions like an ASL producer in the future and for future projects. That's what I see. Well, we'll leave the, op the doors open for that. That's right. It will open doors. Thank you. And of course, take a look. You see this? Yeah. And why this t-shirt is so special? Well, I'm sure you already know because um, you made it. Uh, you first you made Death Vibe, but I want to let people know I'm never going to forget this. So I was working on the set. I was chatting with people. And then this hearing person walked up to me and said, you know, ASL Vibe, I really want one, but how do I get one? You know, I don't know if it's appropriate for me to have one. And then someone started thinking, hey, talking about it and discussing it and came up with the idea of the shirt and changed it to ASL and decided just a limited amount. I think, what, 20 T-shirts, right? 20? I think about, yeah, about 20. Yeah, I about 20. But understand, though, there were 300 crew members, but only 20 T-shirts. And so you gave them to specific people, people who learned ASL and were very passionate about signing. And they really wanted one. And so the last day, of course, they gave it out as swag for free. And so you decided to give the T-shirts to some of those hearing people who knew ASL. And so it's really special because it has the echo on the tag, on the sleeve. Yes. So that. So if you see a hearing person wearing this shirt, then you'll know it's from us. So just thanking them, really, for getting uh, immersed in the culture. So, Douglas, do you want to add anything? We started two years ago selling Dev Vibe shirts. Uh, Dev Vibe. You wear two shirts, hoodies, and various items. But then, for as far as with Echo, we, Dev and Harry could buy them. We didn't care if they bought them. It was supporting our Dev uh, businesses. And then ASL Vibe. Ooh, hearing people could buy that. They can wear those shirts. I thought it would be very nice. Plus, after that, we can sell ASL Vibe shirts continually, and people can show support. Well, I bought this. I'm supporting the deaf community. We have this connection. And the rest is history. Oh, I wish we could talk all day long, but time, we've got to wrap. Do any of you kids have any last question before we close? Douglas, do you have any advice uh, for the young kids who are looking up to you as a leader? Uh, of course. If any of you are really passionate and have a deep desire in filmmaking, you have to really work hard and you have to really continue regardless of what obstacles come in your way. You know, people will forget about you instantaneously, but you will have to continue to show up and let them know you're there. 
you have to continue find any job at different levels if you dream of becoming a producer it won't happen fast you have to start somewhere you have to start from the bottom and work as a pa if they continue to work its way up i started as a consultant uh maybe you can start as an asl coach one-on-one -on -one. i help individuals with their lines um anything on set uh, that you can help them with uh, an asl consultant uh, then more responsibility will be added so then you have those positions and you can go up and up and up you if like i dreamed about being an executive producer and a director in the future uh so I, of course my journey i went through that process if you really want to be involved in that you must go to school uh, that's the fastest way you know if you find a de desire but if you feel like you're ready right now it's the perfect time so oh i ahead. can confirm that i went to film school in 2009 i started at the bottom my first job was as a boom operator that's a hearing job but they tagged me for it and so i kind of worked my way up and kept working my way up until echo showed up finally I'm working with the AD, which is the highest level, quite honestly, of all of the producers. And I was excited about that uh, because as a professional director and an actress myself, you know, it opens doors for me and accessibility as well. And one day, you never know, they may let me direct or an episode or two. You know, I just kind of show them all the things I can do. I show them my dream and my passion and just never give up. Life's not easy. If you have the passion for it and the dream for it, fine. Just keep going. Yeah, you know, you're going to run into some obstacles. Along the way, look at me. I'm living proof. Douglas, living proof. It can happen. Anyway, the time is wrapping up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, can. <laughs> Death power. Death power. ASL vibe. Oh, what a great, great discussion. Douglas, thank you. For the students at NYSD, thank you as well. Um, as always, we like to end each show with uh, words of inspiration, words that will hopefully help you dream a little bigger, help you aim a little bit higher and find the courage to be a little bolder. And so today's inspirational message comes from the late actor, Christopher Reeve, who played Superman for many, many years. It says, I think a hero is an ordinary individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. Yeah, I agree with that. Hey, there is a superhero in all of us. Again, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank Be sure to check out Marvel's new series, Echo, on Disney+. Plus and Hulu. It is action packed. Alakwa Cox is an amazing actor and MCU fans, you are going to love it. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, oh.